I remember the day when everything changed. It was a morning like any other. The sun was just rising over the savanna, casting long shadows over the grasslands. But there was something strange about those shadows that day. They seemed different, alive somehow. Little did I know I was about to encounter something no one in my village had ever seen before. My name is Nati, and I come from a family of hunters. My father was a great hunter, as was his father before him. It was in my blood, a way of life that I had embraced since I was a boy. By the time I was 15, I could track an antelope across the plains or spot a lion in the distance before anyone else. But this story isn't about the animals we hunted. No, this story is about the creatures we didn't see the ones no one talked about. The elders had whispered about them before, especially around the campfire. They called them the shadow people of the savanna. They said these beings lived among the wild animals, hidden from human eyes. They were neither spirits nor people, but something in between. Creatures that moved with the shadows, always watching, always listening. But no one really believed in them. After all, who could live like a shadow hidden in plain sight? That day, I went out alone, as I often did. The hunt was quiet, the animals cautious. I walked for hours, following the tracks of a lone gazelle. The savannah stretched out before me, endless and golden. But as the day went on, I began to feel like I was being watched. It wasn't the kind of feeling you get when a predator is near. This was different. It was like the air was watching me, the wind itself. I stopped and looked around, but there was nothing there, just the usual sounds of the wild. I continued on, but the feeling wouldn't go away. Then I noticed something strange in the distance, something moving with the shadows, just at the edge of my vision. It was there, but when I looked directly at it, it was gone. I shook my head, thinking it was just the heat playing tricks on me. But as I kept walking, the shadows seemed to grow darker, almost like they were following me. By the time the sun began to set, I realized I was lost. The savannah can be tricky like that, one moment you think you know exactly where you are, and the next, everything looks the same. The tall grass swayed in the breeze, and the sky turned a brilliant orange. I decided to set up camp for the night, thinking I would find my way back home in the morning. I built a small fire and sat down, watching the flames dance. The shadows around me stretched long and thin, flickering with the fire. I was tired, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. And then I saw it. A figure moved in the distance, just outside the reach of the firelight. It wasn't an animal. It was a person, at least. It looked like one, but it was dark, almost too dark to be real, like a shadow standing upright. My heart raced, but I stayed still, watching. The figure moved closer, but it didn't walk. It glided like smoke through the grass. And then I saw another and another, there were downsons of them, all around me moving with the wind, barely more than shadows. Fear gripped me, but I didn't run. Something deep inside told me to stay still, to wait. The shadows circled around me, their movements slow and deliberate. I could hear whispers, though I couldn't understand the words. One of the shadow figures stepped forward. It was tall and thin, its features blurred, like it was made of smoke. It didn't speak, but somehow, I knew it was the leader. It stood there, looking at me, its dark eyes shining in the dim light of the fire. I didn't know what to do, so I did what my father had always taught me. I lowered my head and showed respect. My heart pounded in my chest, but I didn't move. Then, something strange happened. The shadow figure raised its hand, if you could call it a hand, and gestured to the fire. The flames flickered then dimmed as if the shadow had taken control of them. I watched in awe as the fire bent and twisted, forming shapes in the air. Suddenly I understood. The shadow wasn't here to hurt me. It was trying to show me something. The fire shapes danced, forming animals, lions, antelopes, elephants moving together in harmony. The shadows whispered again, and this time I could understand. They spoke of balance, of the connection between all living things. They were the guardians of the savannah, 
the keepers of the wild. They lived among the animals, guiding them, protecting them, making sure that the circle of life continued as it should. But humans had forgotten. We had come to see ourselves as separate from nature, as rulers of the land, rather than part of it. The shadows had watched us for generations, waiting for someone to remember the old ways, the ways of respect and harmony. I realized then that the hunt wasn't just about survival, it was about balance. The animals weren't just prey, they were part of something much bigger, and the shadow people were there to remind me of that. The leader of the shadow figures looked at me once more, its dark eyes glowing in the firelight. Then, without a sound, they began to fade, merging with the shadows of the night. One by one they disappeared, until I was alone again, sitting by the fire. The next morning I found my way back home, but I wasn't the same. I couldn't forget what I had seen, what I had learned. The elders had always taught us to respect the animals, but now I understood why. The balance of the savanna depended on it, on all of us. From that day on, I hunted differently. I moved with the wind, like the shadows had shown me. I respected the animals, took only what was needed, and gave thanks for the life that was shared. I never told anyone about the shadow people, but sometimes, when I was out on the savannah, I could feel them watching, guiding me, reminding me of the harmony we had to keep. The shadow people of the savannah were real. They lived in the spaces between light and dark, unseen by most, but always there, always watching. And though they had vanished into the night, their lessons stayed with me forever. That's why, to this day, I walk the savannah with respect. I know that the land is not just a place to live, it's a living thing, full of life, full of spirit, and I'll never forget the shadows that showed me the way.